Hey guys, welcome back to Electrical Car Repair Life. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel, guys. If you have any of the following three vehicles, guys, Chrysler 200, Fiat 500, or Dodge Ram ProMaster, guys, with a 2.4 multi air engine, guys, 2.4 multi air engine, and you're trying to replace your camshaft, okay, stay with us, we'll explain how to do that. You guys actually have only one camshaft, not two camshafts, even though it's a 16 valve engine, you will, guys, have only one camshaft on the exhaust side, okay, on the exhaust cam. Now on the intake side, you guys have the variable control module and all that stuff. We will show you guys how to remove it, how to do all that stuff in order to get to the camshaft. Quite complicated guys. And uh, as you can see the engine is out of the car, you do not need to remove your engine. We got it out guys, because we will be making more than 100 videos on that engine alone. We want to show you guys how to fix pretty much everything, where every boat is located, all that will be guys on the channel. Our mission here at the shop is to save you guys as much money as we can. So please guys, subscribe to the channel and like the video. Let's start on the camshaft replacement now. So when you open the hood of your car, you're going to face this way. You need to remove your engine cover. In order to remove the engine cover guys, you just pull it straight out. Okay, it attaches to these four uh, places on the valve cover. Here you will have your air filter box, you need to get that uh, uh, clamp loose so you can pull the hose back and this will be a vacuum hose attached to the air filter hose uh, box, excuse me, that you need to remove. After that you need a clip removal too guys and right here you will have one clip that you need to remove. It will be just like that clip here guys but this is broken. Next 10 millimeter socket guys and we are going to go ahead okay, and remove that bolt. Perfect. After that guys, what needs to be done, you will need to disconnect the sensor for the intake temperature sensor and then you have one hose clamp, okay for the, uh, okay let me focus there quick, this is for the uh, throttle body, get that one loose guys and after that go ahead and pull it out, perfect, you can see it came out just like that. Now. What else we need to do? We need to start guys with wiring harness, disconnecting wiring harness and all that stuff. So that will take quite a bit of work now. We are going to start now guys. Okay, here we have a few clips. Okay, so if you grab it with, okay, underneath a little bit, okay, pull, you can get those clips out. Somebody broke them, okay, here it's supposed to be another one, it's broken. Here, we are supposed to have two and one there. One is already broken, uh, two are broken, one is good. Somebody didn't take care of it, guys. We need to disconnect ignition coils. How you do that? You pull that piece back. Okay, it's supposed to be back, oh, okay. Close like that. Grab it, pull it like that. Push, down. Okay, let's do this one so I can show you a little bit better. Now push down here and pull it out. We do that to all four ignition coils. Here guys, you have the camshaft position sensor, press down, pull it out as well and disconnect it from, okay, from that coolant pipe right here. This is the PCV valve hose, pull it out, perfect. Next guys, what do we need to do? That wiring harness is loose on this side, as you can see. We need to start guys, okay, removing here ignition coils, 10 millimeter socket and we can start on that now. Grab each one of them, pull them straight out. Okay, great. Now, what else guys we need to do? We need to guys, okay, start right here that coolant pipe, we will need to remove that one. So here you will need to unscrew that post for the valve uh, for the engine cover excuse me just grab it and unscrew it like that after that 10 millimeter nut remove that one and you can just pull that one gently careful not to break it there okay gently pull it up perfect okay and we will leave it on the side now Let's see what else we have right here, wiring harness goes on top of this bolt, pull it out and from that point on 
I think all we will need is eight millimeter deep socket guys and we'll start removing bolts we'll show you where every bolt is located now so we can remove the valve cover let's start on it now one two three now we start on this side four guys five bolts six here seven eight okay there we have nine in the corner ten eleven twelve right be behind the spark plugs thirteen fourteen guys here one more underneath that wiring harness 15 bolts on the outside, 4 on the inside now. So all together we have 19 bolts. Now that valve cover may be stuck so you may just gently pry it here with a screwdriver. Uh, if it doesn't come out guys, after prying it a little bit, probably some bolt is still holding, make sure. Because here you have a little bit of silicone, even though it's a gasket where the timing cover meets with the cylinder head. You have a little bit of silicone and you have a little bit of silicone towards the last cap right before the vacuum pump. Grab it guys and pull it out. Okay, you can see it just like that. It came out. So, we can pre-loosen this now. These three bolts for the pulley. Water pump pulley, so just get them loose. Don't remove them. We do that while the belt is holding, that way uh, the, the pulley will not be spinning. Now we can go ahead and remove the belt, 16mm socket, we go counterclockwise and we can go ahead and remove the belt out. Okay, just like that. Okay, it came out. So with the, okay, with the wrench guys or breaker bar, it's almost impossible to get that bolt loose. Okay, we're going to bring it to TDC point, okay. So now the crankshaft pulley bolt, it's impossible to take it with the breaker bar uh, unless you guys damage something. So uh, what we use guys, our setup here, Dewalt air compressor, you can find the links in the description of the video below. Very little compressor, only 6 gallons, but it goes all the way to 165 psi, this is amazing. And Inger's all end guys, uh, impact, very powerful impact. And we'll go ahead and remove it with a 22 millimeter socket now. okay perfect you can see and it came out now we can go ahead and uh, remove the pulley guys all the way okay just like that so what do we need to do next guys we need to start removing okay the water pump pulley pulley okay all the way out you can see it comes out super easy next we need to remove the idle pulley here and the tensioner pulley there is one difference the idle pulley is a regular thread the tensioner pulley is a reverse thread so it's pretty tight we'll use the ratchet okay hasn't been removed for a while Perfect, came out. Now the one on top, okay, it's a 16 millimeter socket, guys. This one is 16 millimeter and it's a reverse threaded socket, actually. Uh, bolt, excuse me, socket. Bolt. Perfect. Okay, great. Now, we need to start removing the bolts. We're going to change the battery quick on the impact. And you're going to see, guys, all the bolts on the timing cover will need to be removed. We're going to start, okay, you can see, we have uh, this bolt, this, this, here, here, here. You have a few underneath here, and you have to remove the, uh, actually, the bracket for the AC compressor on the bottom, and we need to go all the way around. So, make sure you stand till the end, and we'll show you 
what needs to be done now. So we'll start with the 10 millimeter bolts first. Now we have a few here. This is for the open. Now guys, we need to remove the bracket for the AC compressor because underneath it there is a hidden bolt. One hidden bolt. And we'll explain where it's located. So we'll need to remove that bolt now right here. Okay, you can see the bottom bolt on the AC compressor. 13 millimeter socket. We get it out. Now we have uh, three bolts, I believe. Okay, holding. Uh, holding that bracket to the oil pan and the engine block and the timing cover. So 12 millimeter socket now. We move the engine a little bit guys so we can show you. Once we remove the bracket, I will be able to show you exactly where the bolts are. Okay, and we should have one more after that. In the corner here. So, after this one, that bracket will come loose. Okay, and let me show you where all the bolts are now. So, you can see one, two, three bolts that we had to remove. Now 10 millimeter socket and we have that hidden bolt for the open that we need to remove. Okay, and we got this one out. Next, we continue guys with the 13 millimeter or 12, 12 millimeter. Next, we're going to switch to 13. Now we switch to 15 millimeter and we'll be almost ready guys. We'll show you what sealant to use for the, uh, for the timing cover, it works really really good. And it's way better looking than that red one, I just don't like the red one, I'm not a big fan of it. The one that we use it's grey, it's Max Torque, really good quality. Now we have two guides, let me explain quick. Okay, right here you have a guide, right here it may be stuck. Now you have to be very gentle how you pry that thing because if it's stuck, it can crack super easy guys. We've broken a few in the past from not being careful, so be, be careful. Gently, start, okay. Prying on one side, switch on the other side a little bit, don't just go all at a sudden. So we are done with all the bolts. Now we'll be ready to remove the timing cover, but we want to make sure that we have the engine at TDC point, top dead center. Put your crankshaft pulley, guys. Okay, and this is the mark right here. This is the mark that needs to be brought and aligned with this mark here. So we're going to turn the engine clockwise in our case. Okay, always goes clockwise. Okay, until we reach, guys, that mark there. So we'll just turn it clockwise. You might need to put the bolt and turn it with a bolt if you can. If you remove your spark plugs, it will be way easier to, uh, uh, to turn, guys. Okay, check it out now. This is your TDC point right here with that mark. So now we're going to remove the pulley and we're going to remove the cover. Let me explain quick here. You have two metal guides, okay, that are holding. So if you pry way too much that silicone, uh, gasket maker will be stuck really bad. If you pry too much on one side and it doesn't come out, you can crack that whole cover, guys. We've broken a couple in the past because we were not careful and we weren't our lesson. This is expensive cover too. So go ahead, pull it out, guys. Now we'll explain, guys, okay, what to clean that with, what we used to, okay, to reseal it and all that stuff. Uh, as you know, Dodge used the red silicone gasket maker. We like the gray one. Okay, let me show you. Here, this is, guys, the gray one, ultra gray. 
gasket maker maximum torque this is amazing guys we've, we've been using it for the last probably three years and we never had any problems with that thing it's grain cover so it's really nice and nice looking not like sticking out red and you get guys a scraper if you need to buy any of those tools or the gasket maker we'll have the link in the description of the video below you need to clean your cover really good timing cover you will guys need to clean also uh, the engine block here and the cylinder head when you're ready guys to reinstall everything just put uh, shop towels or something so things don't fall in the oil pan you don't want that stuff to go in the oil pan guys and clean everything with rubbing alcohol when you're ready to put it together so after we remove guys the uh, timing cover you just have to verify again that it's at the TDC point top dead center point okay and we can actually uh, go ahead guys and get to the uh, camshaft right here but on the back side we need to remove the uh, vacuum pump first brake pump guys that will be the first thing that will need to come out so we need to disconnect the holes okay these two red things need to spread and push up careful not to break it grab and disconnect that vacuum line perfect now we have three bolts that we need to remove with 13 millimeter socket one two and three guys perfect and this pump comes out okay perfect just like that you can see great okay, now what else guys we need to do here as you can see we need to start removing the timing chain now make sure you're at tdc point guys we need to remove the tensioner first we have the timing video and all that on the channel how to install the timing chain correctly later with the timing marks and all that we set the timing marks now so you can see some get an idea but one of them you cannot see the oil pump and the balancing shaft so 13 millimeter socket now guys and we're going to remove the tensioner arm out of the way 10 millimeter for the timing chain guide and we can get it out now right here on top this one is 15 millimeter socket guys we'll need to remove okay impacts are good for those because it won't mess up your timing okay and grab and pull the chain with the gear out okay perfect just like that next guys we're going to go ahead and start removing the caps for the camshaft so 12 millimeter socket first we have just two with 12 the rest are 10 millimeter socket that we'll need to use Now, we can grab each of the caps now. Okay, check those. Those are numbered E1, E2, E3, E4, and you have the arrow, guys. Okay, I'm trying to focus here. The arrow pointing towards the outside arrow here as well, so you need to install them exactly the same way later. Do not get them confused, guys. And now we can go ahead and pull the camshaft out of the car. So this is guys the camshaft out of the car. That's how you guys you can see remove it now. Installation guys, putting it together it's in reverse order but there is a few special procedures that you need to follow. We'll get to that in a second. This is where your camshaft position sensor reads from. Okay, right here. And you can see this is your camshaft position sensor on the inside. 
clean it now if it's dirty remove it clean it now since you're at that point guys uh, when you start putting it together we'll have the torque specs and all that coming on the channel when we start putting the engine together we'll make the video guys for the torque specs and here this is your control valve um, the variable control timing brick guys and there is a special way to uh, bleed the air and um, pump oil in it before you start the engine all that needs to be followed guys otherwise you can ruin your engine so uh, this is it guys if you need to buy new parts we'll have the links okay in the description of the video below also all the tools that we use those we'll try to list them as well if you need something thank you for watching guys please subscribe to your channel for more videos and see you guys next time